committing maximum prison. Seemingly, the end of the road after a life of crime. Or maybe not. They enjoy a match, the beautiful game of football. Without a sign of gloom, they engage each other as professional footballers would. Indeed, four of them were on the path of a successful football career, but they drove their lives into a cul-de-sac, an on goal. Meet the Committee United football team. TDM Rogers, condemned. Swipes Wale, condemned. Moses Opula, condemned. Byron Otieno, condemned. Eric Salim, condemned. Teddy, as he is popularly known today, was destined for selection to the national team when he and his accomplices were nabbed in an attempted robbery that went wrong along Nairobi's Thicker Road in 2001. In the company of two accomplices, Teddy was arrested for possession of stolen goods, leading to a trial that lasted close to seven years. By then, I was frustrated. I was injured. So, I was laid off the team. So, I was laid off So, I was laid off the team. So, I was laid off the team. 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 Na wale wachezaji kama wale sasa wako, wako sasa jela. Wengi ukiangalia walikuwa very 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 talented players. Ukiangalia kama Teddy Amrogers, wachezaji wachache wale wamemwona akicheza alikuwa ni a very talented winger, yeah? Very pacey, very skillful. I love a, a real nice guy, yeah? A very social guy. I love nobody believed because alikuwa kwa very friendly kwa team. In the company of two accomplices, Teddy was arrested for possession of stolen goods, leading to a trial that lasted close to 7 years been tough. Uh, of course the law allows for three appeals which uh, he has already exhausted. We have tried to help him uh, in his appeal journey. It hasn't been easy. In the end, his two accomplices were freed after spending seven years in remand as Teddy was convicted and condemned to death, ending all hope of ever playing professional football abroad. His new evidence, uh, so to speak, hasn't, uh, hasn't been taken into account in court because whenever you appeal, you have to convince the court that uh, the, last, uh, the last ruling was not in your favor because of ABC. So uh, the three times he has tried to appeal, it's been trashed. I really hope that uh, Teddy comes out uh, soon enough. As his friend, as somebody who grew up with him, I'm personally waiting for him. Uh, society, some cert certain sections may not be ready to, to embrace his freedom, but me personally and a few of my friends are ready to accept him. I have campaigned in this city. This city is a time bomb. Unemployment, poverty is a serious time bomb, which when it, it will tick, I don't know where me and you, who are doing some gainful employment, will run to. The story is a little different from Moses Opula, who has been behind bars for 11 years. Moses is currently a trustee in the prison, and he developed an interest in football while studying at Sawagongo Secondary School in Siaya County. He then played for FC Leopards, Rivertex and Shakaruturi before injury forced him into early retirement. I was an assistant coach Waweche, FC. Assistant coach Waweche. Eh. Mecha kiwa senior coach, Miki assistant work. So I had a dinner, plus nine minutes in Lama good keeper. Shaona. I will wait to make an echo of Sisan and don't you quick come by my golden cup to go to Kwanaweche. Apa and Nikuda was happy of Tembe and a Kukumbaya. Now Kwamba. Kenyan league football is semi-professional and most young footballers have to seek other sources of income. Some focus on low-paying jobs, 
Others go to school but a number of them resort to petty crime before graduating to violent crimes such as armed robbery and more recently, terrorism. I started the crime, I was about 14 to 15 years there. Hila kitu ilifanyika nijipata hapa, ni zile tu ani bad company, kujiuzisha na bad company, sababu nikuwa naona vijana wanaingia mtaani, wameedunda, wamechafua. So that is, was the pressure, na minu nikuwa mtuwa geto, saa sikuwa na, wazazu wangu wako na ilo wezo. Kuna, kuna zile form za shule, mkiwa shule, kuna zile sneaking, muna sneak chuo, muna ingia mtaa, muna enda muna fanya makrime, muna enda reggae, vitu kama hizo. Kuna wakati hata tukua nafaa kuenda, nikuwa nafaa niende Norway, but unfortunately ilo umanga, ikanitoa, ikaninyima namba ya kuenda huko. 18 years in prison can soften the hearts of the most ruthless criminals. For these former players, Every day brings painful memories of advice not heeded. Throughout the interview, the convicts speak bluntly about the challenges they endured, including substance abuse and depression, bad decisions and sheer desperation that cost them a chance at football stardom. Only footballer, just play football. Football in Ali Pasai, Sika Makitamu. So, Ningewambia to Alji motivate. If you have that chance, use it. Itumie. You see, to look one eye, to capuza, now in Gino Cavumilia, on a patamazuri side. A kuna maluta it will pay a kikombe a crime at twenty cham, may basana, Lakinun as a itwa, as a best player, best player of the year, uh, top scorer, who pate awards to the commultivate Katika Maisha. I was it to a case, see at a jewel may basana, a moment of sana. So crime, Sariana Tunai. Teddy and his friends once interacted with the football creme de la creme. Dennis Oliech, McDonald Mariga, Arnold Origi, Victor Wanyama, and Michael Olunga are some footballers that many budding players look up to, and their successes are an envy to those seeking shortcuts. For Byron, his club had a no-nonsense approach to criminal records, but the thrill of crime was simply too strong. Nikmuenda wako anataka gakawe ni dingo, wako anataka ukai kwa timi yake, yako anataka watu straightforward. Lakini ka happen mini, nakula uko na nakula uko, so no anawezi we have two masters. We stay the which is the ball and we talk. We are good players, but to let us have a bit of a good farm. But in the Kuteleza, so it's not the end of the life. Tomorrow there is another chance. The footballing inmates still love the beautiful game and have formed a team. Kamiti United brings together inmates from different departments where they play against each other and share their skills with fellow inmates. I football is a very important thing. It 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 is a very from the beginning. It is a very important thing. It is a very important thing. It is a very important thing. Na juu football ya nyo kicheza, umecheza morning, sanani unaenda kuwatch game, siku ya ni naishekiwa po, naishekiwa po. Mkati niliingia, tukawa na changes. Sika nime recruit vijana waduoko, tukwa na academy, nafu tukwa vijabaka na senior players. Football and crime have had an uneasy relationship and over the years, many footballers have found themselves on the wrong side of the law. Nicodemus Aruthi, alias Daniel Odhiambo, Played for Luo United and Gor Mahia, and also played three international matches for Kenya in 1972. Aruthi surrendered to police on June 21, 1981, and offered to show them where he hid his guns. When they got there, he ran away, so they shot him. The government eventually paid their family 250,000 shillings compensation. Shem Nyaberi was a former Kenya brewery's forward. Nyaberi was arrested in 2005 after being found with 300 grams of heroin at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport as he was planning to leave the country for Seychelles where he was based as a footballer. Nyaberi was later found guilty of drug trafficking and was jailed for 10 years. 
Eric Otieno is yet another high-profile case of Kenyan footballers who found themselves on the wrong side of the law. The former Ulinzi Stars player was arraigned in court alongside Tom Ogweno and Elvis Ayanyi in January 2011 and charged with being in possession of a pistol in circumstances which indicated that they intended to commit a felony. The players were later sacked at Ulinzi following the incident. Ken Kimani, alias Pineda, was a 26-year-old former Madara United player who died after he was shot three times in the head by a police officer in 2013. The police claimed that Kimani was shot by a police constable who was alerted by screams of an unnamed woman who was mugged at a bus stop in Kasarani by a gang of five. The police allegedly shot at the gang, killing Kimani. Osborne Mande is a former Harambe Sars and Tasca midfielder who was arrested by anti-terror police unit in August 2015 after his mobile phone was used to communicate with terrorists. Mande was held and questioned by the ATPU detectives at their offices in Nairobi area before being freed following the intervention of then Football Kenya Federation President Sam Yamwe. Anwar Yogan Mwok is a Kenyan footballer who was among Al Shabaab fighters killed in Kulbiyo in a battle with Kenyan troops in Somalia in January last year. Mwok played for Madara United and was killed as he rode in a truck laden with explosives at the Kulbiyo Kenya Defense Forces camp. In as much as football boils down to an individual's talent and abilities, it is the role of society to ensure that these individuals play by providing the necessary facilities and amenities such as playgrounds and stadiums. Equally, prisoners are entitled to these same rights and it is for this reason that they have organized themselves into a football team. The simple kickabout and sometimes full matches serve various purposes to the inmates. Sports as a whole, first and foremost, brings people together. Sports also mentally and psychologically also relieves the prisoners and a lot of people incarcerated. The pressures of being inside the torture and all the things which they did, they did wrong. For the prisoners here, I've seen talent, I know the talent inside, and I know for a fact that when they get out, the society needs to give them a chance. A while back, there used to be inter-prisons competition. Those are the kind of competition that really help them to grow, to also develop, interact amongst each other. Also from society and from outside, I think uh, there are a lot of coaching clinics. The federation is, I think, should come up with more coaching classes, coaching for them to be integrated back into the society. We are yet to get to financial discipline. We are yet to go to. We are yet to get to counselling sessions for sports personalities. The leadership we have is not actually guiding these players. And you find that it's everybody for, for himself, God for us all, which is actually killing the youth in this country. About a billion people living in the world's cities today reside in deprived areas like Madare, with few or no basic amenities. Kiangalia kama huku mitani ndani, lakuna grounds, kuna opportunities to access, ya kuopatiza ku access the community sports facilities. Most of the time, kama hapa goan, ni just a few meters kutoka Madare. Lakini vijana wa madhara wazitumia hapa wala wakijiji kwa sababu lazima walipe na ni pesa mingi watatua wapi wana wa elfu mbili. In many African countries such as Kenya and Ethiopia, more than 90% of urban populations live in such deprived areas according to the UN Habitat. And according to the UN World Health Organization, children in Nairobi slums are two and a half times more likely to die before their fifth birthday than in any other areas in the city. When I grew up in madhara hapa, so, role model But still bado because of the bigger number ya youth kwa community and less opportunity bado unapata crime inawafuata wengine hata hata wengine unakuta sometimes mtu ana grow up ile mtu ametoka yetu ndio the only role model sometimes wanapatikana kwa group ama kwa team ya thugs na unajua ukipatikana hapo pia crime ni, ni moja na most of the time ukiwa identified na witness that ulikuwa among hiyo hiyo team it is very difficult kujipula hata kama wewe ulikuwa kwa football player kipenda mfano kama wa Teddy ya Mroja sababu tumechezana hapa madhara ndio sana yeye alipatikana kwenye 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 kikundi kama hicho na mara moja si mnajumulishi wa wote so yake ni ile pia pressure na wale watu wanatembea nao mtaani na the 
the difficult part in Akwan that you can grow up with your community, you grow up with them as friends. Maybe when you know to drop from sport, they start something else. Like you know, you in Akwan when you go, you can't be on a mountain or on a sema. Where you can abandon all friends. So whether sometimes you have a crime, but don't have a kuwa karibu na. But you never know that day. Yake arubai ni labo takuwa karibu na yeye. Choices have consequences and. Yes, they knew there are consequences when you're caught, you're going to, to prison. But now the peer pressure, maybe the lifestyle they wanted, it took them to another level whereby they can do anything, maybe to add to what they're earning in, in their club so that they can, they can have good lifestyle, live well, party or something like that. A recent report by PricewaterhouseCoopers and Save the Children suggests that there was a 24% increase in crimes against children between 2010 and 2011 and this snowballed to a staggering 52.5% increase from 2012 to 2013. About 68% of the children in Kenyan slums are illiterate, and about 35% are into substance abuse. The children are not only victims of violence, but are in danger of becoming part of an organized crime racket, especially with disruption of schooling and lack of parental care. <laughs> Huko mtaani job ni mingi mtu unaweza fanya na shughuli ni mingi. Uizi aisaidi na uizi ailipi. Uizi mwishowe ni kifo. Na kama utakufa jamaa utapotelea jela. Kumbuka hata ule tajiri mwenye na mali yake, ni kustruggle or struggle ndiye akapata. So nothing come easy. You have to struggle so that you can achieve in life. Crime inaweza tuma upotee kabisa. Uh, duniani watu wakose kujua mali huko na crime pia inaweza tuma mpaka ukose kuwa na uso wa mzazi wako ibaki tu uta unaona uso wa mzazi wako kwa kio na pia ukose ile fra ya mzazi hakuna kitu mbaya kama kukosa uh, fra ya mzazi kuona mzazi na also kuona familia yako yani azeni sai maisha tu ni dingo kulia tu wako kitu yote tu na na shirikia na crime unaachana na kwa sababu ndio maisha ni tamu na ni short at the end huko uh, ana una tawala watu labda ulikuwa na mtoi ana sasa labda mtoi wengi wao wacha watu wakiwa dogo sasa unaona mtoi atateseka tu prison life obviously takes a toll on one's mind football therefore provides an avenue for emotional release and is a worthy pastime as the convicts await better days so we'd like them to to have physical fitness at the same time, it is part of our recreation uh, so that uh, uh, they don't uh, stay idle. They have talents which can come up when they play. Teams have emerged uh, that every block has a team. We have even gone to <coughs> those, who are, those, that, those terror groups who have also participated. And uh, we see that discipline has, has, has been maintained. These are the grounds that host Kenya's biggest and most feared prison, the Kamiti Maximum Prison. In here are delinquents who may never ever enjoy life in its full flavor, courtesy of the mistakes that they made in some point of their lives. But for Mbai, Teddy and the rest, football and sport is the balm that keeps the days going and what keeps them hopeful. Celestino Lilo, NTV.